Scissor lifts are a common sight around building projects, warehouses, shopping centres and major events and are often used in preventative maintenance. They are capable of providing a large platform area that can accommodate two or more people and equipment up to a particular lift's safe working load capacity. Scissor lifts are available in electric, diesel and dual fuel versions. The diesel and dual fuel versions are generally used in rough terrain. The scissor lift comprises three major sections. The ground section, where the base and steering wheels are located, along with the stabilizers, if fitted. The scissor mechanism, which sits above the ground section. The platform section, which holds the operator and the primary controls. Before operating a scissor lift, make sure you have carried out an appropriate risk assessment, including identifying the tasks to be completed. Check for hazards such as ground conditions, the proximity to power lines, and establish effective controls. Ensure that your workplace regulations are being adhered to. Finally, make sure that the work area is appropriately barricaded and signed. Scissor lifts are designed for a range of indoor and outdoor uses. To use a scissor lift outdoors, it must be wind rated to 12.5 meters per second, 45 kilometers per hour or 28 miles per hour. All scissor lifts display their wind rating on the compliance plate. Make sure you are using the correct scissor lift for the task. If the wind rating is not stated or is less than 12.5 meters per second, then outdoor use is not permitted. There is a maximum gradient or slope angle that the scissor lift is rated to drive on when in the fully lowered position. This is referred to as the gradeability of the machine and is stated on the compliance plate. A gradeability of 10% means a maximum climb of 10 metres over a 100 metre length or a slope of 1 to 10. You should never drive a scissor lift elevated onto or along a sloping surface. Each scissor lift has a safe working load decal. This is commonly located on the platform and on the compliance plate, although some scissor lifts may locate the decal in alternate locations. The safe working load of the scissor lift is its maximum weight bearing capacity, which is commonly made up of the occupants, tools and materials. Some scissor lifts are fitted with a sensor that will detect weight overloads and will disable the operating controls. If the combined weight of the personnel, tools and materials exceeds the scissor lift's safe working load capacity, you must move the task to another scissor lift that is rated to carry the weight required or reduce the weight on the scissor lift's platform until it is lower than or equal to its rated safe working load capacity. The operator must never attempt to exceed the safe working load capacity of any scissor lift. Platform handrails are designed to protect the operator, occupants, tools and materials and prevent them from falling from the platform. You must not use handrails to carry materials or tools. The platform area of the scissor lift provides space for people, tools and work-related materials. Most scissor lifts have extension platforms which have their own safe working load capacity. You must always distribute a load evenly across the platform to provide stability at operating height. This is especially important for large deck scissor lifts. All elevated work platforms, including scissor lifts, have a dedicated safety check and maintenance logbook. The logbook is an essential part of the safe operation of the scissor lift and is usually located on the platform in the yellow pouch. Maintenance checks should always be performed in accordance with the logbook and the manufacturer's specifications. Never attempt to use a scissor lift that does not have a logbook. The logbook comprises three sections. The Operator Daily Safety Check section. You must complete this section prior to using the scissor lift each day. It features pre-start visual checks to examine water and oil levels, hose condition, damage and the functioning of all signals and alarms. Before performing any checks within the scissor lift structure itself, make sure that the safety prop is correctly engaged in accordance with the instructions provided. Once started, the operation of emergency stop buttons, brakes 
and the scissor mechanism can be carried out from the ground control position. If you find any defects or faults, you must report them immediately to the owner and record them in the pink Faults, Problems and Actions Taken section. After completing the safety checks and determining that the scissor lift is safe to operate, you must sign and date the Operator Check section, recording your EWPA yellow card number. The Faults, Problems and Action Taken section is where you can record any faults you found while using or checking the scissor lift. You must record any faults or problems no matter how small they may appear. The owner of the scissor lift is required to address these faults through corrective and preventative maintenance. You must not use a scissor lift if previous faults and or problems have not been repaired and corrected and signed off by the owner. The final section is for owner routine maintenance and safety checks. This sets out the maintenance program details for the scissor lift and contains a specified list of safety and operational checks to guarantee a safe operating condition at all times. The scissor lift must be serviced at least once every three months and inspected annually. These processes are often completed more regularly by rental companies that inspect the scissor lift prior to hiring it out. The scissor lift has emergency stop buttons in two locations, the ground level and the platform control panel. Familiarise yourself with their exact location and layout before using the scissor lift. The ground controls are designed to operate the scissor lift while carrying out pre-operational checks before use or in the case of an emergency. Outriggers must be used if fitted to the scissor lift to level the unit before elevation or to gain maximum height. Some scissor lifts are fitted with specific alerts to indicate when the unit is in a level position. Others must be leveled using a bubble gauge or similar device. A scissor lift can travel in its elevated position only if the ground surface is firm and level, the weather conditions are good and you consider the operating area safe. When travelling in the elevated position, you must ensure that the working area above and below the scissor lift is clear of any obstructions. All self-propelled scissor lifts are fitted with a tilt alarm that will activate if you are operating in the elevated position beyond a preset safe working gradient. Side force is the amount of horizontal pressure that can be applied from the platform to or from another object. Heavy weights that are dragged to a platform at height can create instability and the real possibility of overturning. You must not exceed the stated side force of the scissor lift. Power lines present a major hazard to operators of all elevated work platforms and scissor lifts. Whether inside a building or outside near power lines, the operator must remain aware of any lines near their working environment. Australian standard 2550-2002 states that the minimum distance from distribution lines should be no less than 6.4 metres from low voltage and 10 metres from high voltage transmission lines. Your trainer will advise you on any state-based variations and on the use of spotters. An operator should stop using a scissor lift or any elevated work platform if they deem the situation to be unsafe for any reason. Some of these reasons could include excessive winds or poor weather conditions, potentially exceeding the weight capacity, maintenance problems or malfunction such as oil leaks, fumes or other contaminants, proximity to the public or power lines, and dangerous or unstable ground conditions. You must consult with a site safety supervisor if you think any hazard or risk may result in damage or potential injury. Correctly used and maintained, a scissor lift will provide you with an effective and safe platform from which to carry out your tasks. It is your duty as the operator to play your role in carefully examining the scissor lift prior to use and correctly maintaining the logbook for the benefit of all other operators and the owner.